Hello, my name is Geraint. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you started watching because you saw NASA in the title and thought this video might be about spaceships or rockets, then I apologize. This uh, study aims to compare the workload involved in looking up academic English collocations using a writing assistant to that involved using other more traditional lexicographic resources. So the specific research question is, when looking up collocation information, how does the workload experienced using Collocade compare with that experienced using other non-writing assistant resources? So a secondary aim of this study is to explore the suitability of the NASA Task Load Index, which is an instrument from uh, human factors and human computer interaction research, uh, to assess its suitability for research in lexicography. So before I go on, I'd like to say a word or two about writing assistants. And there is a, a lot of them. And whether it's explicitly stated or not, in many cases, uh, the rationale underlying the development of these assistants is that in editor feedback or feedback in the writing environment demands less work from the user than more traditional lexicographic resources. So resources such as dictionaries, corpus tools, forums, things like that. Why did I choose Collocade in particular? Well, it's a web based tool and it's free. Uh, no installation is required. This was advantageous because I was carrying out this research in a blended learning context. The participants weren't in a lab or in a classroom. They were working from their homes or their dorm rooms on their own computers. And having a web-based tool made things just much simpler. In contrast to other, some other assistants which um, tend to be jacks of all trades, the fact it's specifically aimed at collocations means that there are fewer confounding variables. It's also been shown to have a high degree of usability and little familiarization necessary to use it effectively. I also must admit here that I was involved in its development. So Collocate looks just like any other text editor, except that the words underlined are not spelling errors or grammar errors. They are nodes uh, in collocations that we have collocation suggestions for. Now these no nodes and the suggested collocates were selected to be maximally useful to academic writers. I'm not going to go into how this was done here. Um, you can read about this elsewhere, but I will urge you to try out the tool for yourself. I'd like to say a little also about measuring workload and see what lessons we can take from human factors and human computer interaction research. So. In human factors research, there has been a trend away from purely performance-based measures, so uh, evaluating the time it takes to do a task, the accuracy with which it's done, the number of steps in a task, etc., towards more subjective measures of workload. So these performance-based measures are the kind of things we use in a lot of lexicography research. But in human factors research, they're interested not only in how well a user completes a task or how quickly they do it or how much work the task involves but also how they feel when completing the task. At the risk of sounding like a hippie, feelings are important. Measuring workload with subjective measures is no easy task. Different operators, that's HCI speak for users, have different conceptions of workload. For example, for one person workload might involve physical effort but for another person that might be a relaxing pastime. Mental effort might be hard work for someone. Uh, on the other hand a lot of people enjoy playing chess. Time pressure. Some people equate high workload with having a strict deadline or doing something under time pressure. There's also the fact that impressions of workload are influenced by our own perception of how we've done on a particular task. So if we do badly on a task, we tend to think that there was a high workload involved. 
So to mitigate for the subjective nature of workload, two researchers working at the NASA Ames Research Center, Sandra Hart and Lowell Staveland, in the 1980s, developed a, a multi-dimensional instrument with six rating scales. Uh, this is known as the NASA Task Load Index, or the NASA TLX for short. So this, the six dimensions are mental demand, i.e. how much mental and perceptual activity was required to complete a task, physical demand, how much physical activity, pushing, pulling, turning, controlling, I guess in digital lexicography terms, clicking, temporal demand, uh, the time pressure the user felt uh, in completing a task, effort, how hard they felt they had to work, performance, how successful they felt they were, uh, and frustration level, how insecure, discouraged, irritated, stressed, or annoyed they felt when completing the task. In addition to these six rating scales, there's a weighting procedure uh, which tailors these raw workload scores from the rating scales to our individual conceptions of workload. This involves 15 binary choices where the user selects the dimension which is important to them, so effort or performance performance, for example, temporal demand or frustration. The instrument, the TLX, was originally designed to measure workload in aviation, but it's become a de facto standard for measuring workload. It measures workload in using TV sets to, uh, you, to control rooms in nuclear power stations. To my knowledge, it hasn't yet been used uh, to evaluate workload in lexicography. It's been shown to be reliable in, t in terms of re repeat reliability and valid in the sense that it measures what it claims to. There's an official NASA version uh, which has a pen and paper implementation with an excellent instruction manual uh, and a smartphone app. Uh, and on the official NASA version uh, has a 20 point rating scale for each of the six dimensions. However, variations abound. This study, uh, because I was using um, working in a blended learning environment, the pen and paper obviously was not an option. And, well, the smartphone app was not really practical either. I also decided to follow the precedent of many, many studies and use a seven-point Likert scale. So this is a little bit what the scale looked like. This is the mental demand the mental demand dimension. So as for the setting and participants, uh, the study included 106 undergraduate students in the third year of Applied Linguistics or Translation degree program at a Spanish university. Uh, they have an advanced English proficiency level. They're first language speakers of Catalan or Spanish. And if they're not uh, first language speakers of one of these two, they certainly have a, a high proficiency. The actual class or module was called Writing and Translation, and this involves general and academic writing skills in English and translation from Catalan and Spanish into English. This year it took place in a enforced, pandemic enforced blended learning context, which basically uh, comp comprised a weekly live lecture via video conference software uh, complemented by asynchronous practical activities via a learning management system, so Moodle in other words, writing tasks, translations, videos, short quizzes, you get the idea. And this is where the survey instrument from this study uh, took place. So the design, well we have one treatment, uh, so the user completes a set of gapped sentence frames using uh, either Collocade or another non-writing assistant resource. Then they complete the rating scale. They do another treatment, so completing another set of gapped sentences using Collocade or another resource. Then they complete a second, uh, the rating scale again, but for the second task. And then finally they complete the workload waiting procedure. So the groups um, this year, there were two groups following this course. This meant we could split each group to cohorts of approximately 30 students each, which allowed us to use a counterbalance design to mitigate for the effects of ordering. I suppose I should say something about the frame sets. So there were two frame sets, 
consisting of 10 gap sentence frames per set. Here's an example. Occurring at a fast pace, technological developments cause mm, change. Uh, as many of you will know, making these kind of gap sentences is no easy task. Of course, corpus statistics help. In Sinclairian terms, I think the trick is to not make them too open choice so the user can't just write any old word in the gap, but also they can't be completely idiom idiomatic either. They had to have a similar difficulty overall across both frame sets. And of course, Collocate doesn't cover all the words in academic English. It covers around 580 no nodes at the moment. Uh, so we ha we were limited to these nodes, but this really wasn't much of a limitation. In fact, since the sentences had to be ecologically valid, ideally they had to reflect collocations that academic writers actually use in the wild, relying on collocade with its careful selection criteria and mostly ensures this, I think. So here's the first frame set. Um, you'll see there's a mixture of lexical and grammatical collocations. They cover all of the collocation paradigms, so verb plus noun, noun plus verb, adjective plus adverb, etc. in collocate. There's also a mixture of transitive and intransitive verbs here, and ideally they should be comparably difficult. This is the second set. So now to the results. Well, um, 106 students took part in the study. But filtering for those who used lexical resources in both treatments leaves us with only 78. Let's take a look at the results. Collocate is represented by the lighter bars on the left, while the darker bars on the right represent the other tools. The lower the score, the better, the lower the workload. As you can see across the mental demand dimension, physical demand dimension, temporal demand dimension, performance dimension, effort dimension and frustration dimension, Collocate has a clear advantage. The only dimension in which this was just above the significance threshold was performance. Now we have uh, on the right hand side here uh, the overall workload score which is calculated taking into account the weight each user gave to each of these dimensions. The collocate has a clear advantage here of just over 0.5. You'll notice that the bars here on this chart are of different widths and this represents the relative importance the users gave to each of these dimensions in this collocation lookup task. So if the most important was uh, the mental dimension, then we have performance, then we have effort, then we have frustration, then we have temporal, because we didn't, do, this really wasn't a time task, and then we have a uh, physical demand. So they didn't find clicking or opening and closing browser windows to demand. This difference in temporal demand is interesting. It correlates with a um, performance measure that we did take. So I must stress that this is a self-reported measure, but on average uh, Collocate has an advantage of around three minutes compared uh, with the other resources. So this is certainly something to be positive about. So to sum up, as far as collocation lookup is concerned, Collocate clearly offers workload advantages over many other more traditional resources. This could be extrapolated to other writing assistants, but I need to stress that further research is needed here. I think we've shown that the NASA task load index uh, is a potentially valuable tool for lexicography research. And I'd like to think that I've gone some way to making clear the, greater, the need for greater consideration of subjective measures in lexicography user research. I would be particularly interested in the interplay between these subjective measures and performance measure. So we have data on this from this study. Uh, so future in future research I'd like to look at the interaction between 
the performance of uh, the participants on this collocation task and the subjective measures of workload. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, these, in case you were wondering, are the other resources aside from Collocate that students uh, listed as having used. You'll notice that uh, word reference and lingui predominate. Thank you very much for your attention.